Good afternoon. I kind of want to do a, a short little video on showing you the the cold tolerances for some of these uh, tropicals. I mean, you know, you'll be amazed at, at how cold these some of these trees can get down to. Um, I wanted to kind of just give you a, a quick run around on uh, what what to expect when you're tropicals are, they look like they might be a bit sad. But when you look at it, I mean, we're in the middle of December, December 16th, yeah. Um, so in the Central Valley, our temperature normally doesn't warm up until between March and April. So I've got a few more months to go before the trees are happy. I mean, right now, Almost all of my trees are in survival mode. I mean, they are just hanging on for their life. And I mean, we're, we're you know, halfway to uh, December, so <laughs> kind of wanted to show you the, the results. I mean, everything looks great. I mean, I, I don't really see a whole lot of uh, negative impacts. Um, so the whole idea is once, once your trees are established, um, kind of like the Inga there, uh, they really have no problem at all with the the winter. Uh, even for like some of the mangoes here, the, the cold necessarily isn't an issue. I mean, this manila is, you know, looking awesome. I mean, it, it's got some, you know, uh, issues uh, just because it's not growing at the optimal temperature, but seems to be doing fine. Um, but there is a couple of trees that I'd like to show you that um, are a bit on the extreme side of things just because they would prefer the weather to be a lot warmer than what we we have here. So one of the first ones would be this guy right here. This is a, a, a sand tall. Uh, it is, you know, quite sensitive, very, very sensitive. If you look at the foliage, it's, it's uh, struggling a bit, I mean, you know, we, we had a couple of uh, mornings where it actually did dip down to the low 30s. And of course, this is the result. Uh, though this other one seems to be doing fine. So, and another tree too, if you come over here, is actually going to be uh, the, the sour saps up there. South Saps, along with the Santal, these really, of all my trees, these are the only two species that seem to be severely impacted when the temperature dips to the low 30s. Uh, beyond that, everything else looks awesome. I mean, even the Mamesa Pote uh, looks good. I mean, obviously there's some coal burn up here. Um, wax jambu is looking phenomenal so yeah I'm I, I've actually if you look at the structure here I, I, I'm, I'm waiting I, I, I've been kind of wanting to do this video for a while to kind of show you how cold these trees can go down to without uh, suffering any negative impacts um, again the only trees that seem to be affected visually are, are the, the sour saps uh, which I have three of them back there, uh, along with the Santal. So concerning the, the trees that don't look so happy now, I, I'm actually glad that they are the way they are because this allows the leaves to fall out naturally on their own. And when the new flush of growth comes back up, it, it, it does two things. Number one, brand new leaves, which basically means brand new, brand new solar panels. Um, creating all those uh, energy for the tree and also by the tree stripping its leaves it, it also promotes fruiting so it, it, it's really a win-win for me uh, same with the centaur so those are really two trees that seem to be negatively impacted uh, with, the, with the coal I mean the wax jambu uh, <laughs> it's looking phenomenal uh, same with the, the mame, I mean, these guys really shouldn't um, be like this uh, once the temperature dips below um, 40 or so. The, the mangoes, of course, have no problem at all. I mean, they, they all seem to be doing great. I mean, if you look at the 
temperature sensor here, it's 51 degrees at the moment. Uh, even the rumor chill uh, doesn't seem to be struggling as much. Uh, in fact, it's, it's all very green. I, I see no impact at all. So, the greenhouse structure here that I've got uh, set up, I will be enclosing the, uh, everything that you see in here with a 6 mil uh, clear plastic here, basically erecting a greenhouse in here. Uh, and also putting a little heater in here as well and, and, and keeping the temperature at 40. So anytime it goes below 40, the heater kicks in, keeps the, nice, keep the, keeps the whole room nice and warm. Th that's going to be my goal. But uh, if you look at the Anona's, um, no problem at all with the coal. Uh, I mean, of course, these are deciduous jujubes, uh, apricot there. Uh, except the green thornless uh, Indian jujube there, that, that's typically evergreen. Uh, everything seems to be enjoying the cold, no problem at all. So, so basically, I mean, even though you, when you look up the, the USDA zone and, and the cold hardiness with some of these trees, Take it with a grain of salt. I mean, it, 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 if you're able to provide some microclimate to your um, trees, I mean, they are going to be relatively stress-free. Uh, and, you know, they'll, they'll be very good for you or to you. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, everything seems to be doing awesome. Miracle Berry here, I mean... It, it, it's been actually raining quite a bit, surprisingly, which is wonderful. That, that's actually one of the reasons why I, I have not uh, created the, the greenhouse yet, is I, I want it to get as much rainwater in the spot as possible. And everything seems to be doing phenomenal here. So, let me see if I can get back here. Yeah, I mean... Longins doing great. Uh, even the uh, star fruit here is doing pretty awesome. I mean, this was the one that the the ladder fell on it. I mean, it's making a very good comeback. I mean, if you look at the tree above everything else, that's the inga that's going to be basically providing the microclimate to everything else underneath in this section. So w one one note. Um, I wanted to let you know, well, just a slight change of subject, but uh, the white supporter here, I mean, in addition to growing new foliage, uh, it is a, a winter plant, so it's going to flower and fruit. Um, one of the best tasting uh, fruits there is, is, is the white sapote. Uh, I mean, in my opinion, every yard really should have one just because these guys are so easy to grow. Uh, low quads, of course, I mean, there's a bee activity there. I mean, it, it's always wonderful to have some insect in there. So I wanted to talk about uh, the position of some of my trees here. So, because I live in a two-story building, generally between the winter months, right about half of my yard here, half of my uh, greenhouse here, the trees do not get any direct sunlight, and which is fine, because as as the sun sets over there, my my house practically just blocks the sunlight. I mean, it really is. Uh, from this side here and back that gets some sunlight uh, but everything else really does not get any sunlight which isn't a which isn't a deal breaker for some of these trees just because again in winter time i do want most of these trees to be in survival mode as opposed to growing which is uh, which is where the sunlight uh, comes into play so most of these trees i do want to just kind of almost go dormant. I want them to just kind of just chill until uh, the weather warms up and until the sun gets above our position. 
Um, so it, 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 it's really not a, uh, it's not a, a, a deaf situation for the trees if they don't get any direct sunlight. Um, and because of the enclosed environment that I will be producing for these trees, uh, it, it's really the heat that I want and not necessarily the, uh, the direct sunlight. I mean, sunlight really all it does is it, it allows the, the tree to produce energy. And um, because I've been keeping these trees nice and productive during the growing seasons, there are plenty of stored up energy in the root systems. So that, that's how most of my trees are able to make it to winter. I mean, when you look at the ground here, let me see if I can just uh, show it to you. Doesn't look like there's a whole lot of activity, but check it out. I mean, the second I remove some of these um, leaves, this really is what's uh, keeping the, the ground nice and alive. I mean, when there's movement, there's heat activity. So, yeah, you, you've got, to, in addition to your trees, you've got to also keep your microorganisms, including the, uh, the, the worms, happy. I mean, this, all these mulch, uh, uh, bamboo leaves here is providing a, a good uh, environment for <laughs> these worms, which in turn poops, and the poop is uh, very nutritious for the trees. So it, it's a very good symbiotic relationship. So I'm going to take you to the front where I've got a few more examples to um, right, show you. So here's the front. So admittedly, the, my backyard is in the north side where the sun rises over there, over here on, on the south side. So most of my plants in the uh, front yard are going to be doing a lot better than my plants in the, I'm sorry, the, the, my plants in front yard are going to be doing a lot better than the plants in the backyard just because winter time, uh, it, it gets basically full day sun. So there's a lot of uh, trees uh, here that will continue to produce fruits um, even though it's, you know, 45 degrees right now. Um, but I wanted to kind of show you if you've got a south-facing face, yard, uh, it is going to be ideal for tropicals just because, you know, once the sun comes up, it warms up the area nearly instantaneously. I mean, which is why I've decided to, uh, you know, put more of the sensitive wax jambus up here, um, mangoes, everything else um, seems to be doing great, uh, especially the long game. I mean, this guy is phenomenal. So, yeah, just uh, in, in short, just like you and I, I mean, you, you're able to train the, the trees to basically harden themselves up against the valley's climate. I mean, so to, to kind of give you an example, um, you know, I, I, I do work out occasionally, uh, but there's one thing that I, I've have not been doing and that is incorporating cardio into my routine so when I first started jogging for about three miles or so I mean it was uh, embarrassingly bad but then about a year later after doing it for so long I mean it, it, it you know I mean it, it, it's a non-issue for me I, I actually enjoy it now so same with the trees during the growing seasons you want to give them the best environment you can give them the best feeding you can. Uh, that includes uh, granular and also f uh, foliar feeding. Uh, once they are uh, established, they've got a lot of energy stored up and with a lot of those energy stored up, they usually have no problems at all with our uh, winter. So yeah, that, that's really it. Just uh, you know, keep your trees happy when they're growing and then uh, in the non-growing seasons just just let them chill. Just let them take a couple of months off. And uh, that, that's really the best thing you can do. Yeah, uh, right around this time is the, the time that you do not want them to uh, grow. So just um, in, in short, just treat your trees like deciduous trees, even though these are evergreen tropical trees. So yeah, that, that's it. All right. Have a good afternoon.